back again. There's no stopping me, is there? Thank you for joining me for another video. I'm really grateful for all the well-wishing messages that I got. I didn't mention it on my last video, actually. Um, I had a little bit of surgery um, coming on for three weeks ago now, and lots of people left messages saying, I uh, hope I get on okay. Going really well, actually. Um, not up to my usual exercise levels. I keep myself pretty fit, but I'm making, uh, I made a 5K run yesterday, and I walked up one of the local crags with my son today. So uh, I'm getting there, so thanks for that. What video to do today? Well, a few people have been calling out for a cooking video, so I'm going to have a go at that. One of the things I really like to do and I study and I try and do a lot of it is cooking and then dehydrating the food. And the theme of most of my cookery um, videos have been um, dehydrating. And again, I'm going to do that. But I did have a think and I thought, we see an awful lot of main meals made, you know, curries and stews and this sort of thing. And I, I do a fair bit of that. But one of the things we rarely see on camping or bushcraft style videos is people making a dessert pudding or um, as we say up here, afters. So there's one thing that I did some time ago and I ate it all and I thought, actually, that's really good. I, I must sort of tell people about that. And it's a really nice filling and sweet dessert that I think is really good whether it's uh, winter or summer. Winter it's a nice sort of warmer um, prior to maybe going to bed. Summer you might eat at about I don't know six seven o'clock in the evening and then you've got all this daylight left before you get in your tent and again it might not ha why not have it at you know half past nine something like that as a little sort of uh, I don't know what you call it a supper or something like that before you go to bed but I thought I'd uh, show this little one that I've done a number of times to you and see if you like it. I'm going to make six helpings of the dessert. So I've got six bananas. I've also got two punnets of strawberries that I've got in the market today. And late summer, autumn, we picked loads of blackberries for my Scottish wife will say brambles and insist on the name. So we've got some bananas, strawberries and blackberries. I'm English. And I've got three and three, that's six sachets of instant custard powder. If you're going to follow this recipe, it's important that you get custard powder where you add water. We don't want the uh, custard powder where you add milk. I've also got a lemon, we'll come back to that later, and a mixing bowl. So those are the ingredients. Um, you notice that my strawberries were fresh. You can actually buy frozen strawberries which work just as well if you can't get fresh ones. And it's worth just noting that this recipe, although it's simple, it takes a little bit of time because you've got three different types of fruit there that I'm going to dehydrate and therefore it's three dehydration processes because each one of them is going to pretty much fill my dehydrator. So it is, it's basically turn it on and leave it, but there's going to be sort of three kind of seven hour dehydrating sessions. So I'll give yourself, you know, a, a day and a bit to prepare this. But as I say, it's not labor intensive, it's just a bit time intensive because you have to leave it for a while. So I would say that that would really be a fair helping with custard for each portion so I'm just going to use about six times this amount to gauge how much fruit I need. So we need six bananas, it doesn't really matter how thick you slice it but try and make each slice about the same thickness because then they'll all dehydrate evenly. Right, that's the six bananas done. Now, some people might be saying, well, what about the lemon? And the reason for the lemon is, I'm not gonna be eating it, but if you just squeeze a bit of lemon juice onto these banana slices, it will stop them going too brown. I'm not too bothered about them going a bit brown. But that's about all you need, a sort of couple of squeezes of half a lemon. Give them a bit of a coating and it just uh, 
helps them keep the colour a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is put the banana in my dehydrator. A few people on previous videos asked me about uh, this. I don't know an awful lot about dehydrators. It's the only one I've had. It works a treat. It's that make there, Exilvan. Exilvan, that's it. And yeah, it just goes from 35 to 70 degrees centigrade. Um, I just use it full power if I'm doing something that's got meat in it, or if I'm doing fruit, I just turn it to halfway. I don't really pay attention to what the scales say, so about halfway for fruit, all the way for meat, because you want the meat to, you want to minimise any risk of it going off, so I always keep it on 11 in spinal tap terms for meat. But there, we're going to use it about there for uh, the fruit. I've got various inserts that I use in my dehydrator. The ones I'm going to use for this recipe are just the ones that came with it. But for other things, I've got, if it's a very liquid uh, meal that I'm dehydrating and there's chances of it dripping down from tray to tray, I've got these hard plastic trays. They're good, but it does mean the dehydration process takes absolutely ages because there's no real th throughput of the air. And what I quite like to use uh, on occasion is these kind of rubberized ones. If the consistency of what I'm cooking won't go through these holes, then I really like to use these because they'll allow that throughput of air because there is a fan in the dehydrator that uh, um, circulates the air. Okay, so I'll get on now with dehydrating that uh, banana. When you're dehydrating things, to try and leave a gap between each piece just to get as much throughput of air as possible. I've got uh, five trays so I can really afford to spread these out. Actually that's all my bananas done in two and a half trays and I've still got therefore two and a half trays left so take back what I said about it taking quite a long time with three lots of dehydration only going to need to do two. My blackberries are still defrosting so I'm going to put all the strawberries in at the same time as the banana. It's the same deal with the strawberries as it was with the banana. Let's take the leafy bit off and uniform sizes. I might, might cut them lengthways actually but that's what you want, same as the banana slices, really. There we go, we've got a shared tray of strawberries and bananas, and I'm just going to use the next two trays just for the strawberries. So it's about 8.30 in the evening now. I've got these on. I might even just turn it a little less than halfway, because I'm going to give them a good 12 hours in there. When we see them in the morning, they won't look that attractive, to tell you the truth. I think the strawberries will be sort of like little pellets, not pellets, but they'll be, I don't know, little red raisins. And the bananas will certainly go browner and they'll, I want, the consistency I want them to have is a good tap uh, and they should be able to snap rather than bend because I want to get all the moisture out of them. So yeah, it doesn't look pretty when it's uh, dehydrated. None of the meals do. If you open one of your dehydrated meals that I've made and look in it you think oh, I'm not having that until you add water to it and it all comes to life again and that's what the custard does with this recipe so night all I'll leave that going and I'll see you in the morning well they've had to overnight to dehydrate just before I went to bed I rotated the trays on the dehydrator just to get a little bit of equal heat around uh, all the bits of fruit. It's the next day now and what I've done is I've put the banana and the strawberries into a couple of little containers and I'll show you what they look like. So here you go, it's not the most attractive looking dessert yet but there's bananas, there's my strawberries and I'm putting them separately at the moment because I'm going to divide each of them into six by weight. Uh, strawberries look pretty horrible, they're, they're solid and uh, you can hear that's what the banana's like. But when you think 
I chopped each strawberry into three pieces, then that is one strawberry and they'll plump up when you put them in the custard and give them a little bit of a gentle simmer as we'll see when I try it out. But that's good for now. And now I'm going to dehydrate the blackberries. It's important when you leave the fruit to cool after it's been in the dehydrator that you don't cover it because you don't want any condensation to form and therefore these start to uh, rehydrate again. You want to keep them absolutely dry. So leave them uncovered to cool down. And on with the blackberries, I'm going to use these rubberized inserts that I've got because if you think the strawberries were ugly, then you wait till you see these when they're done. They're just little pellets once they're dehydrated and they'll fall through some of the gaps here. I'll do for that one. There we go, that's four trays. Good enough. There's quite a lot of blackberries there. And on it goes again. Well, that's the blackberries done. They had about five or six hours on medium heat and they've turned into very unattractive little sort of raisin pellets, but all will come good. Right, so let's cook it up. So just while that's boiling up, I'll tell you about another couple of... Oh, who's this? Hi, Daddy. That looks good. Where can I get one of them? A bit embarrassing. Well, if you go to richardoutdoors.com and look on there, you'll be able to get one. I'll tell you what, if you put in HNY 2021, I'll give you five pounds off. OK, see you later. Hmm, sorry about that. Right, so as I was saying... Oh. Well, I do take cash, but you won't get the five pounds off because that's online. But uh, see what's in your piggy, piggy bank. There you are. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you. it. Bye. Good. <coughs> Sorry about that interruption, but sales are sale. Um, so this is a sixth of all the mixture. Bananas, strawberries and blackberries. And I'm just going to put it into the water whilst the water warms up to get towards boiling point. And that will give them a little bit of time to rehydrate before I put the custard in. You can see there just after a couple of minutes, the fruit's nicely rehydrating, plumping up. And just as it comes up to the boil, and take it off the heat for a second. Move this to the side. And just pop the simmering on. Pop that back on. And we'll start adding in some custard. Now I've emptied a whole sachet into here and weighed it. 75 grams. I think I'm going to need about two thirds of it. So let's say use 50 grams of the custard powder per serving. And we'll see how thick it goes. And if it's too runny, we know that it's a full pack per serving. And I think it needs the whole lot. So that's easy, one sachet of custard powder. Oops, minus the bit that you spill. Oh, that feels better, that feels like proper custard now. 
keep stirring so that it doesn't turn into school custard. It's not going to be that yellow colour custard because of all the fruit that's in there, blackberries and the strawberries, that's going to colour it. Let that sit on there. So that's been simmering now for two or three minutes and as I say the custard will take the colour of the fruit. <laughs> and there's a helping. Like the ramen that you saw the other day when I had that fairly wintry camping expedition. It looks odd, it looks a bit yuck but the proofs in the tasting. So here we are. Strange way to eat. Sitting bolt upright, got to get it in the camera though. It doesn't look pretty, but it smells delicious. It's got fresh fruit in it. It's got custard, blackberries, banana, strawberries. And here we go. Mm. That is bursting with flavour. Mm. Well, I'm in the comforts of home and it's delicious. So thinking what it'll be like out on a camp in the cold. And as I said, people don't think about dessert. They maybe carry a the old chocolate bar or something like that, but this is a hot pudding. And this is what you need. So what I'm going to do now is divide the rest of those portions now into five equal helpings. Obviously I've got one here, I was, was going to make six. And I'll just put them in Ziploc bags. Don't need to be in any sort of fridge or freezer because they're completely dehydrated and they'll last for months and months before they even need to think about using them which probably is good under the current <laughs> situation, but mm. oh, as it spends more time sort of still rehydrating and the custard is getting softer and softer and more delicious. Mm. Simple, give it a try. Thank you very much everyone for joining me again. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll put another couple of videos uh, up here that you could uh, maybe take a look at. Hmm, can't stop eating this, I'm sorry. But in the meantime, stay safe and well. It's been great to see you and I'll see you again.